Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. I'm going to be giving a little bit of an overview about how I would go about creating a city builder type game using Unity's data oriented technology stack and their entity component system. Now of course some very popular examples of city builders are things like city skylines or sim city where you basically are in control of an entire city. You are kind of managing the creation of different buildings and services for all your residents to utilize. Um, and the residents basically are just kind of all controlled by the computer and they move around and they're kind of on their own schedule doing their things. And so you kind of have to manipulate the city in order to keep your residents happy and you know have them spend lots of money so then you can create more and more cool things. And so for games like these where we have large numbers of dynamic entities, it really is a great candidate for a game to be created with Unity's data or to technology stack and their entity component system. So today I just kind of want to give a little bit of an overview about kind of how I would go about creating these types of games. And it's also a very special video because it is sponsored by the Unity Asset Store and their brand new Dev Days of Summer Sale where they asked a bunch of creators like myself to hand pick a bunch of assets that will be part of the sale. And in today's video, I'm also going to be featuring all the assets that I've selected to be part of this sale and showing you how I would utilize all of these different assets to create an awesome city builder type game. And real quick, just to give some more details on the sale, it's going for a total of four weeks. This is actually week three of four. There were some previous weeks where some other creators were featuring some assets. And so this week is my week. And then um, after week four, there's actually gonna be an additional two week period where it's kind of the best of portion of the sale. So all the top assets from all four weeks of the sale are going to be featured in those last two weeks of the sale. Now, the first asset that I'm going to feature is Dots Traffic city and this is a really excellent asset because it pretty much gives you a complete project out of the box which contains a lot of the core systems that you're going to need for a city builder type game so for example as you can tell by the name of the asset it of course uses unity's data oriented technology stack and it gives you kind of the ability to manage vehicle as well as pedestrian traffic in a city setting. Now, when I say that this is a complete project, I truly mean that because the first time that you actually download and install the package, it basically tells you that it's gonna overwrite everything in your project. Now, of course, if you have assets and stuff there, it's gonna kind of import them alongside that, but it does change a lot of the project settings. So if you are wanting to integrate this with an existing project, I would recommend just creating a fresh new project with the Dots Traffic City asset in it. And then from there, you can kind of pull some of the existing systems into your own project. Now, I do think that this asset, it would be really great for prototyping when you're just kind of trying to get the feel or, or test out some certain mechanics that may be unique to your own city builder. And why I would recommend doing it that way is because this asset seems quite opinionated in the way that it goes about doing things. So you're kind of a little bit locked into that way of doing things if you do kind of want to build off of that project. That being said, it does give you a ton of really great tools for world building. I think that if you have a level designer who's very familiar with manipulating things in the Unity engine, but they're not necessarily the type of person who's gonna be able to open the code editor and start editing things in there, I think it still gives them a whole lot of options to be able to get really uh, granular with the configuration of certain things as far as you know spawn rates and how the you know vehicles and pedestrians all kind of interact with each other you know you have a lot of really granular detail about you know manipulating things and that stuff can all be edited through custom tools within the unity editor through this asset and in fact I'll leave a link down in the description where you can see a whole playlist of kind of an overview about how to use this asset you see that the code editor was actually not even opened one time like all the configuration was done uh, directly through the Unity editor. This asset also gives a lot of really good debugging tools so you can kind of get some better visualizations on what types of things are happening in your game and kind of how some of these interactions are taking place. And it really does take advantage of Unity's data or technology stack very well. Like, you know, it has really good performance and it takes advantage of, you know, cool concepts like world streaming where they kind of dynamically loads in and out sub scenes based off of what the camera can see, which is a really nice performance optimization. Now, I haven't dove too deep into the code on this asset, but from what I've seen, everything seems to be laid out really nicely. Um, now this is quite a complex project, so there are a lot of scripts that go into it, um, but everything is organized in folders really nicely, and the scripts that I have opened up, I was able to understand exactly what was going on because everything is named um, kind of appropriately. It's, it's laid out in a nice fashion. Also, I will say that the documentation for this asset is extremely extensive. There's a lot of stuff available online. 
uh, kind of going into detail about how everything is set up and works in this project. So yeah, definitely a lot of work went into the Dots Traffic City asset. And again, I think this can be a fantastic base to build a prototype off of, or even use as a reference for your own kind of more custom solution. Next up, another really important thing about city builders is kind of having some nice dynamic terrain. So kind of depending on the type of game that you're going to be making, you know, maybe you want to have some kind of pre-made levels that are kind of built out for people to play around with, or maybe even give people some options to manipulate the terrain at runtime to be able to kind of, you know, change how the whole world works and everything like that. So for that, I would highly recommend checking out some of the micro splat tools by Jason Booth. Um, right now, his ultimate pack is a part of the sale. And so the micro splat tools are some of the top tier terrain tools that you can get. They're far better than the ones that you get in the Unity game engine. They also have really good performance, so you don't necessarily need to worry about how things are going to perform at very large scale. Um, and the ultimate pack gives you just a ton of additional bonus packs to add in different effects and things to your terrain. So I would highly recommend it checking that out. And by the way, the terrain can also be manipulated at runtime. So if you do want to kind of expose some terrain tools to your players, you can definitely do that using this pack. And of course, another extremely important part of city builders is building well buildings. Now, of course, I'm sure many of you are well aware there are a ton of different buildings types that you can get off of the Unity Asset Store uh, that can fit the style of the, the game that you're going to create. But what I really want to call out is a cool asset by Tobias, who is a friend of mine and co-host of the Hot Path Show. And he's created an asset called Fake Interior. Now, what this asset does is it's basically a shader effect that kind of gives a little bit of a 3D parallax. So if you're looking in the windows of a building, as you kind of start moving around, the perspective kind of shifts around so you can essentially see inside some buildings. So whether you're going, you know, side to side, up, down, it's always going to, you know, keep the appropriate perspective to kind of give the illusion that you can sort of see into that window, even though they're like actual geometry doesn't exist. It's all really just a shader trick to make it look like you can kind of see inside there. Now, of course, the real advantage of this is that you don't have to have any kind of you know major performance concerns because you don't have to you know render all kinds of crazy mesh for you know hundreds or even thousands of different rooms in all these buildings. You can really just have a shader do all that stuff on the GPU for you. Okay, so next up, we need to talk a little bit about pathfinding. So of course, in our city builder type game, we're probably gonna wanna have a bunch of people kind of walking around throughout our city. Now, in order to do this, we're going to need some ability for them to do pathfinding so they can kind of, you know, stay on the sidewalks and cross the street when they are supposed to and all this. And so a really excellent asset that I do want to call out is the agent's navigation package. Now, this agent's navigation package, the base asset itself is really good for kind of a single unit pathfinding, you know, just taking one, um, you know, player and moving them from one point to another. And this asset, I've done a couple videos on it in the past that I can point you to, but I'm a really big fan of how well this asset integrates within the Unity Editor and is configurable for your own project. You know, like I mentioned, maybe if we wanted the pedestrians to cross the streets at the appropriate times, well, you know, that stuff doesn't necessarily exist built into this asset because this asset didn't consider for it but it's really easy and laid out super nicely for us to add that additional logic in without too much trouble. Now there also is an expansion asset for the agent's navigation package, which is the crowds expansion. And this is really good if you have a lot of units and you want them to go to a single point. So if, you know, for some reason in your game, maybe you had like a, you know, a concert and you wanted to get everybody out into the parking lot, um, well, then you can kind of go ahead and implement this asset, which kind of does a little bit more flow field pathfinding, and it really handles these kind of large dynamic crowds in a better way. And then of course, if we're talking about, you know, pedestrians moving around and all this, a really important thing that we need to talk about is animations, because Unity ECS does not have a out of the box animation solution that we can use. The kind of, you know, recommended kind of out of the box approach is actually using a bunch of different game objects to sync up with your uh, entity representations of the pedestrians. However, this can end up being quite costly, especially if we have the scale of, you know, thousands and thousands of objects. We don't necessarily want, you know, thousands and thousands of game objects all kind of doing their individual animations. So luckily the Unity Asset Store has a couple of really cool animation solutions, which are both available on sale. The first one I want to mention is the GPU ECS Animation Baker. 
This is a really cool asset because it actually you know, takes all your animations that you have by default and it bakes them down into a texture and then that texture can basically just get sent over to the GPU, which can be sampled and ran super efficiently. And again, these are all working with pure entities, so we don't have any hybrid game object sync or anything like that. And in my testing and experimentation, I've been able to get you know tens of thousands of dynamic objects running at a very high frame rate. The other one that I wanted to mention is the Rukhanka ECS animation system. Now this one's really nice to use because it actually uses Unity's kind of built-in mechanism setup for kind of managing all these animations. And again, it still is fully ECS compatible. In my experience, this animation package had been quite easy to use and set up and I've been very happy with it. Now, another thing that we need to talk about is camera control. So most often we're gonna kind of have like a little bit of an overhead view and we can create a pretty simple camera that kind of has the ability to kind of pan around the map and maybe do a little bit of tilting and zooming to get kind of a different angles on some things. You know, we can do a lot of that stuff kind of with, uh, you know, Cinemachine camera. However, we might want to get a little bit more complicated and maybe have the ability to kind of follow some of our pedestrians in kind of a third person view. Now for this, I would highly recommend the third person camera for dots. I did a video review on this asset as well. And in my experience, it was you know super nice to use. Um, it works really well with uh, entities and it kind of does a lot of nice dynamic stuff where if you have kind of like geometry, it's not gonna be starting to clip into the geometry. And you're not gonna kind of get some of those bad experiences that a, a very simple camera controller might have. Now, a very important part to these city builder type games is going to be the user interface. Now with these games, we're often going to be navigating quite complex uh, menu structures in order to select the appropriate things for building different buildings and you know setting kind of you know maybe tax rates or other properties about our city. And all these things are going to be needed to be shown in menus. And we definitely want some like kind of hierarchical menus as well, where we can kind of you know select things and we can go kind of deeper into another portion of a menu, we want to be able to kind of you know scroll through through things and have like good looking and feeling buttons that maybe have some kind of little animations associated with this stuff. Now, if some of this stuff starts sounding like really overwhelming, you know, coding this, all of this yourself, because of course, you know, Unity by default doesn't necessarily have all this stuff built in. Well, I would definitely point you to an asset that I've found extremely useful, which is the Doozy UI. Now, Doozy UI kind of builds off of Unity's regular UI solution, and it gives you a lot of the stuff that I was just mentioning, where we can kind of have a little bit of a hierarchical flow where we can kind of start diving deeper into different menus. Um, we can apply different animations and color changes and things like this on all the buttons and different UI elements. And overall, it's just really a great way to kind of manage these more complex UI structures instead of having to kind of worry about dealing all that stuff yourself. I will mention that this is another of those assets that is quite opinionated. And a lot of times you're kind of locked into doing things the doozy way. However, in my experience, the doozy way has been pretty good and I've been able to achieve some, you know, really nice looking UI that kind of, you know, not only kind of looks pleasing, but also is kind of, you know, feels pleasing to use because of the, you know, subtle little animations and stuff. And of course, as you're going through and creating your UI, you know, at some point you might want to make something that looks a little bit nicer than more or less Unity's default UI. So I would definitely recommend checking out a UI pack such as the Modern UI Pack. This pack is really nice because it gives you a bunch of different little icons and button configurations and just different colors and stuff that just look nice in the Unity editor. And so it's really good to just kind of have like a nice repository of all these things. So if you want to, you know, again, add in different icons or, you know, just have some buttons that look a little bit more custom than just kind of the regular Unity UI default, it's definitely good to have a pack like this in your arsenal. And another piece of UI that I do want to talk about is world space UI. So a lot of times, you know, in our city builder type games, we might want to have, you know, little things pop up above the pedestrian's head, maybe when they like spend some money or they, you know, go to the ATM or whatever, um, just so we can kind of get a little bit of a high level overview about kind of, you know, what's happening within the game. We can kind of see these things happening in real time. 
and it just kind of gives your player a little bit more information about you know what is actually happening in the simulation. So for this, I would recommend checking out something like Damage Numbers Pro. Now the reason for this is because we definitely don't want to have you know thousands and thousands of like Unity canvas objects kind of doing crazy things within the world. You know even if we had some pooling solution, that's still not going to be a good idea performance-wise. So with something like Damage Numbers Pro, we can have a lot of these different little pop-ups kind of pop up above the you know heads of the characters and it is much more performant it's also extremely configurable so you know of course the thing is called a damage numbers pro but i'm suggesting to use this for you know something like you know every time someone spends money or their happiness increases or something like that we can you know really get configurable with you know all the different colors and font types that are being displayed above the pedestrian's heads and so we can kind of have different styles set up for different actions that a particular pedestrian might be taking and then the final piece that i wanted to talk about is really related to your game development workflow and being able to just have a better development experience so a couple of developer tools that i do want to talk about is one is of course the odin inspector which allows you to make your own unity custom tools a lot easier you know be able to kind of display things in nicer formats create different buttons and sliders just by literally adding simple little attributes above different portions of your code and it really goes so deep with all the different things that you can create with the odin inspector so it's just a really great asset to have um, especially if you're building out these larger projects where things start to get a lot more complex and you want to have you know better editing tools for you know to allow the designers on your team to be able to you know create things in the editor much easier and then the final asset that i'm going to bring up is the black box prefabs asset by chiro this asset is super cool and convenient to use because you know how many times have you had some like you know really complex asset that has a bunch of kind of like you know child hierarchies going on and then you click on it and it just selects you know like the left arm and you really just kind of wanted to select the root game object well this asset basically takes care of all that for you so it basically just kind of turns that all into one game object so there's only one thing sitting in your hierarchy there's not the, the whole kind of parented hierarchical structure or anything like that it's just kind of treated as one object. Now you might be thinking, oh, hey, so what if I had some component on some kind of lower level thing that's now hidden? Well, fortunately there is a solution for that because with this asset, you can kind of expose different fields on that top level asset. So if you had some say like speed value that was kind of like a couple uh, objects deep and you could kind of expose that in the main thing. And then also this kind of allows you to, you know, control what things are exposed. So, you know, for example, you're not gonna be like manipulating the transform of all these different objects, or maybe there's just a bunch of other fields that you're not necessarily going to be editing all the time. So again, you really kind of have control over these specific fields that you want exposed in the editor. So it really is just kind of like a, a cleaner and better workflow experience, which is super nice. I should also mention that there is a light version available for free on the Unity Asset Store. So if you want to try out some of the features, you can definitely do so for free. And so with that, that's going to conclude kind of my overview about how to create a city builder game and a lot of the kind of core systems and things that you'll need to think about when creating your game. I really hope that this video kind of gave you a, some good insight into a lot of the assets that are available on the Unity Asset Store that can really help kind of get a lot of the difficult things implemented in your game so you can really kind of focus on the kind of core gameplay and the more interesting aspects of your game rather than you know having to worry about you know creating some whole menuing system and doing pathfinding and everything like that. And so once again, I will just mention that these assets are available on sale right now as part of the Dev Days of Summer sale. And again, if you did miss the specific week that they're going to be on sale, uh, there is kind of that best of portion of the sale happening after the sale concludes. Um, where some of the top selling assets are going to be on sale. So maybe some of the ones featured in this video will also be part of that sale. So with that, I do just wanna thank the Unity Asset Store for sponsoring today's video. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something, and hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one.